Hey people, and we're back. We're gonna resume this playthrough. It seems we do have another transmission. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't warn us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. <laughs> yeah. Come get us already. Signal location uploaded to PDA. All right, now we have two choices. One is over there, and one is, is over there. Both are almost equally distanced from us. And I'm gonna go for this one, because I seem to remember that this one is next to the... Um, next to the mushroom cave entrance, so... jelly shroom cave. So, I might as well find it and place the beacon next to the entrance. And I think that uh, I'm going to build uh, build a base uh, right over there somewhere in that particular particular glassy plateau zone. So let's head off in that direction and the C new sea glide has uh, apparently different controls than the one in the original Subnautica and these match with the controls in below zero with the F key you can turn on and off the sonar or the radar or whatever you want to call it and the right click is used for the flashlight I'm trying to look around the area for some interesting racks or resources but nothing interesting was found here. Okay, we need to go back to the surface below we dive any deeper. And this is the moment in which your oxygen supply becomes inefficient without the rebreather because this is uh, I think below 100 meters depth. Not sure. We'll see. Or not. We're just below the threshold. There is this PDA. Integrating new PDA data. We'll listen to it later. And as you can see, this is the entrance to this jelly shroom cave. He was of course right. Range scans suggest this biome supports extensive biodiversity and connects to a number of small cave networks. And the snakes apparently ate him before we managed to reach the pod, so we're alone yet again. Show a nearby cave entrance, depth 90 meters, leading to an unknown environmental biome. Alright, we'll investigate that later once we are better equipped to handle that particular investigation. And I'm gonna place, I think I do have a beacon. Yeah, I do have a beacon. We're gonna place a beacon right near this entrance somewhere where it won't get in our way. We're gonna label it mm, Jelly Shroom Cave Entrance. Alright, now the game is making you do what you're supposed to do. To scan for additional blueprints and tools. 30 seconds. For the next big thing that you're gonna need and it is of course the sea seamoth submarine which is by order of magnitude faster than the sea glide if you think this is the fastest that you're gonna go you're of course wrong and there are probably more fragments here so there's one more And the third one should be also nearby. I might as well pick some quartz. Quartz because we're gonna need it for some glass. Thirty seconds. 
Oh wow, for some glass pieces. The the grassy plateau zone is easy uh, place to obtain a quartz. See how it glows in the dark, but only during the night. During the day, it's a nightmare to find any. This is the egg. I think it's a small egg. I can pick it and hatch it later. The big eggs uh, occupy four spaces. This one is pretty small. Still not a sea moth recipe, but there's the rack. Uh, the sea moth fragment. But I think, yeah, there's the rack. I'll scan the area around. Look at this Leviathan, it's beautiful. Of course, it's the reef back. And you need to be aware that sometimes that sometimes they can have tiger plants attached to them. So here you can find biodiversity on its back, some new plants like this brain coral it emits bubbles which you can use to replenish to replenish your oxygen supply it's on you as an emergency backup plan when you're particularly deep Yeah, that's the tiger plant. Let's scan it. But while moving. It shoots projectiles which can cause minor damage to you, but be aware that if you take uh, pieces of it and plant it near your base, if they try to attack you and miss you and hit your base, will actually cause structural damage to your base and it may even flood, so it's a thing to keep in mind. Let's see what pieces we do have here. Bioreactor. We're gonna need that. But still no sea moth fragments. These sand sharks can ambush you by surprise, but they are not particularly fast or too dangerous. I remember back when I first played this game. It is a creature which jump scared me at first long before the reaper leviathan and <clears throat> other dangerous more dangerous predators i'm not gonna investigate this rack because i'm aware that we're gonna need a laser cutter somewhere inside so i'm just gonna hang around and try to get more fragments if it's possible but i'm in no luck today leave me be let's scan you since you are so persistent this is quite inefficient way of exploring this wreck, but I'm determined to at least complete the Seamod blueprint. And I also seem to have found another... This is the scanner room, yeah. I don't need that one. Come on, bite me or do something. Just leave me alone. Preparing the day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and this eventual death. 
These crates contain some sometimes valuable items like water and food. No luck here. Since it's night, I'm gonna barely do anything here. But the morning is apparently on the horizon. So, maybe I'll hang around here just for a while longer. And try to find more sea moth fragments. This is bioreactor. No, scanner yet again. So no Seamoth fragments here. Absolutely nothing. And this is starting to become serious waste of time. Thirty seconds. The laser cutter I do need. Vital signs stabilizing. And the base will be located right atop one of these spires. Um, I have yet to determine which one, but maybe this one or the higher one. I'm not sure if these floaters are gonna get in my way, but this is also a nice place to start. So I might as well build some starting things. Over there, but I, I don't have, yet have a base construction. Tool. Is that a Seamoth fragment? Yes, it is. It is. But that is not enough. You also need a mobile vehicle, mobile vehicle bay. And I don't seem to remember what, where it is obtained. Maybe a, some other zone. Maybe the crash zone or something like that. Are an essential component of many habitat modules. There, the bioreactor. Initial power problem solved. It is the cheapest and most abandoned power source that you're gonna have. And here we can complete a laser cutting tool. So. I think we got the most out of this place. And I'll try not to drown. I'm gonna go back towards our escape pod. And I'm gonna since I do have the silver now, I'm gonna craft the improved O2 tank and the laser cutter and whatnot. And then I'm gonna head over and investigate the other escape pod. Hopefully, I'll find some uh, mobile vehicle bay fragments over there. Or if not, I'm gonna head closer to Aurora. Oh, yo. I don't think I can do that because the radiation is present present there so now i'm gonna need some glass and you need to unequip the existing o2 tank in order to upgrade it to improved one 
this is gonna tremendously help you with the O2 supply. Now it's, I think, double or more than double capacity. Alright, I'm gonna process this into more titanium. And I seem to have obtained the recipe for plastil ingot. We're gonna need that to, I think, create sea moth. Not sure. Let's spin it. Oh no, we need the basic titanium ingot, which is, which is cool. Also, more power cells. We need two batteries, so I'm gonna I'm gonna need more copper. Uh, also, I'm gonna unpin where it is. I'm gonna pin the laser cutter, and I'm gonna unpin the high capacity O2 tank. And let's see, we'll try not to die now. I need some water. Let's compress this titanium. And deposit, I think I can use this quartz. i leave two quartz. Oh no, I'll create the glass from the entirety of quartz. You need to have few pieces free for when you're attempting to build a hatch or something. All right, now let's see the habitat construction tool. Is it available? Oh yeah, we need a rebreather. This is going to increase the efficiency, but we first need a wiring kit and we do not have the silver. To silver ore, right. And the rebreather requires the fiber mesh. So we're quite a long way from there. And the habitat builder requires another wiring kit and the computer chip. Wow. All right, so since there is nothing left to do, let's head over into this direction. Nothing too fancy to pick up here. No racks, maybe copper. Yeah, maybe more copper here. Be careful of the exploding fish. I always forget their name. Yeah, here we're gonna get all the copper that we do need. Oh, there are no exploding fish here. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that I'm gonna try and obtain all the seeds and all the creature eggs and place them in some fun places around the base and inside the base to make the most out of this gameplay. There is always some fun to be had inside these caves. In this case, the name of the fun is the copper. We'll pick up this egg too. And this is some important resource. Silver. 
Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Wow. See, with the sea glide, you can easily escape this creature. Let's do this. I hoped for more silver, but I guess no such luck. I'm gonna do one additional pass inside that cave and try to... Oh, we're gonna need one sulfur. Thank you. And see if there is any more silver to be had here, but no, silver usually runs deeper. Here, there is a rare, quite rare egg. The gasopod egg. And I think I'm almost overoccupied the inventory. Not a good idea. Have I scanned the gasopod? Yes, I have. Alright. Let's see what's up there. Nothing too fun. See, this one was supposed to give a sea glide, but I obtained it, obtained it earlier. Integrating new PDA data. Inside new some of the racks, you will find standalone blueprints that are completed right away, like the compass now. And I don't think there is anything more here. I have the cave sulfur, I don't have diamonds. I don't have any means to create a rebreather yet. I need more silver, but I need to dive deeper. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna explore any of these wrecks before I do build my... Um, laser cutter, because you need... you need it in most of them. The trash can is a useful interior piece. These open racks we can freely explore. But it's just a minor one. Let's see what's inside this cave. Maybe some silver. Oh no, 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 no. Is it gonna erupt or no? Let's try to stick to the edges. Silver, lead, sil oh, lead. Shuttle bug. I'll try not to die in the process now. There is more. Congratulations, survivor. You have exceeded your weekly exercise quotient by 500%. Gold. Data indicates that swimming was your favorite activity. Be sure to vary your routine for uniform muscle development. And now the inventory is full, and I do need. I'd be happy if I found one more silver. just lost power let's remove the battery from the repair tool 
Drive core has reached critical state. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. So the Aurora is going to explode. No, I discarded the battery. And I seem to have lost it. Oh no, I'll get it once I yeah, free free up a space. And another space, yeah. Um let's replace the battery. I'll get that silver later, right now. It's night again, I, and I don't like to be anywhere near that deep when it's night. At least, but not yet, I'm gonna need a fiber mesh, I'll be able to craft the rebreather. And some more batteries. But first I need to free up the space inside my inventory. More glass. More wiring kit. I'm gonna spend at least some of that copper to process it into wires. Alright, now... I'm, I'm gonna unpin this plasteel recipe for now. And let's free up some space. I'm gonna create at least three more batteries. Is it one copper or two copper? And a compass, why not? Yeah. But I do not have additional materials for wiring kit. Wow. Just keeps getting better and better. Um, yeah, it's one copper. And uh, I stacked up a lot of lead. I don't yet have a diamond now. Okay, let's create batteries first. One more. Right, now I'm going to replace. Here is another transmission. Um, this with a full one. Let's hear this. This is Avery Quinn of Trading Ship Sunbeam. Aurora, do you read? Over. Nothing but vacuum. These Altera ships. They run low on engine grease, send an SOS, you offer to help. They don't pick up. Aurora, I'm out on the far side of the system. It's going to take more than a week to reach your position. Do you still need our assistance? Over. I'll try them again tomorrow. Damn charter's going to have us blowing our credits, running errands for Altera. See what the long-range scans pick up in the meantime. So, during the crash, apparently Aurora sent a distress call, and it was picked up by another ship, Sunbeam, which is rel rel relatively close by. It's gonna try and save us. We'll see how that ends. Now, where was I? Yeah, I needed more of... Now, I need more space. I'm starting to waste time by optimizing space. You never want to waste too much time on that. Now I need some kelp. One for the Seamoth lubricant. 
And I think, I think, I'm not gonna take too ma much of this. Where is it? Fiber mesh, fiber mesh, fiber mesh. Nah, I can't be bothered. I'm gonna take at least two of this to create fiber mesh. And let's head back. You need two samples, of course. My memory serves me better than I thought. Now the rebreather. This will reduce your oxygen consumption when, when below certain threshold. At this point, 100 meters. Now, I think I do have everything except the mobile vehicle bay to build a CMOD, but I can prepare the battery. I mean the power cell. Now, the trick is to create to create the power cell for from the already spent batteries it will come at full charge which is an interesting thing that you can exploit see now we have one completely depleted and one semi depleted power cell and yeah of course i forgot to bring another cp uh, seed piece for uh, I promise I won't do this often, but I'm gonna do a separate gathering mission so that I don't have to run back and forth to pick up a single resource. I'm gonna pick as many as I can now to... Yeah, that's about it. Uh, to create silicon rubber, perhaps the lubricant and whatnot. Now the battery. I mean the power cell. Now we're gonna combine these two into a power cell. And it comes at full charge, which is handy. Now more silicon rubber. You always need those. For the base reinforcements, I'm gonna unpin the recipes, unpin the hmm, laser cutter, no, the rebreather, the power cell for the time being. I'm gonna pin computer chip. I might as well eat some. And drink some while I'm here. Man, this game loves me too much not to offer me any bladder fish in the vicinity. Come here. Calorie intake recommended. Yes, yes, yes. I'm on it. I might also get coral for the computer chip. And no coral when you need it. It usually does appear. There it is.
anything fun here? Not you. You're not fun. I didn't make it. Maybe more silver. Just maybe. Which creature in our world would self-destruct to completely to scare off predators? I don't think any would. Computer chip. Okay, I'm not gonna create advanced wiring kit. Let's see what I needed a computer chip for, I'm not sure anymore. Hmm. The habitat, right. And I need one more silver. Alright, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna pin the compass, I'm gonna unpin the computer chip. Okay, I need lots of silver, and I mean lots of it. But water comes first, food comes afterwards. has occurred in the Aurora vital drive core stabilizing the reactor will reach a supercritical state let's watch the spectacle there goes our ship Now the radiation is high around the Aurora and we're gonna need a radiation suit to approach anywhere near it, which is exactly what I do need to, um, I think, get a mobile vehicle, mobile vehicle bay. Let's see the radiation suit requirements. Well, it's not that. I think I need radiation gloves too, or it has been consolidated into one. Oh yeah, one crafting creates all of that. Let's hear for the, about the transmission. Aurora, this is Sunbeam again. We just picked up a massive debris field at your location. I didn't know how bad, how many of you, I, I didn't know. We're now en route to your location. We're gonna bring you home. Sunbeam out. Okay. What else can I say? The only time I parked a rig this big on a rock that small was in VR. And I blew it. It's a bad option, all right, but so are all the others. Okay, so they're gonna come and pick us, and they're not sure if they can even land here. Which is always nice to know. Um, let's see. Um, geological data, limestone, outcrops, data, downloads, aurora, survival. Let's listen to crew logs from those two wrecks. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell rig to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? 
I'm sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the light pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. It's the second pod that we encountered, and the first one said this. How's his log? It's the day of the crash. I don't know what the heck is happening. I'm scared, and I'm not going outside. There are shadows in the water under the hatch, but I can't tell if they're rocks or aliens. And there's weird-looking caves nearby. The Aurora was carrying everything needed to build the phase gate. Mobile vehicle bays, bioreactors, propulsion cannons. It had a cinema. There, there was a zero-G gym. My cafe. I don't understand how we're here now. I don't know why no one's coming for me. No one is alive. Uh, we got uh, the clue that Mobile Vehicle Bay is actually around the Aurora, so we're gonna head over and pick it, but we'll do it in the next episode. First, the Radiation Suit, then the Mobile Vehicle Bay, and hopefully we'll get a CMOD then, and afterwards we can try and start building some basic base compartments uh, at the place which I already described it will be. So if you like this episode, hit that like button down below, stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.